Today we officially start geometry, and in order to start geometry, we have to do some non-geometry stuff. And in particular, one of the things that you will find very frustrating is that unlike other classes, this won't always be me just standing up here telling you what you need to know. And you write it down and then you puke it back to me later. We have a ton of definitions in this class. You're going to write most of those definitions. So in order to be able to write those definitions, you need to know how to write a good definition. So let's start with this. What do those two things have in common? Similarities. And what is different between them? Differences. Jot a couple things down, talk to your table, see what you can come up with. There are obvious things, but there are more subtle things. See what you can find. Feel free to talk to your group. Talking is good. some of you getting all fancies in your pantsies and using a Venn diagram. Do you know what a Venn diagram is? What is it, Nate? It's the two circles and when they meet. Oh, look at you with the Venn diagram. Of course you know what it is. Good. For those of you that need a refresher, Nate, how does this work? Uh, so one side, so for example, under the dog you put the characters into a dog, not the cat, you put characters into a cat. Then in the middle you put what they have instead of like the comment. Okay. So inside the circle but not in the overlapping part would be the differences. <clears throat> in the overlapping part would be the similarities. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Martha, give me a similarity. What do these two things have in common? Both animals, you said? Okay. Animals, you can clearly read that. Good. Keep going. They're both like common pets. Pets. Good. They both have fur. Fur. I'm going to run out of room. That's all I have. Beautiful. Uh, Julia, more similarities? Um, they're the same color. Good. Color. Keep going. Tail. Um, they both have paws. Good. I'm running out of room, so just keep listing them. Pause. What else? Um, that's about it. Corey? Mammals, very nice. They bear live young. Uh, this group. Natalie, what do you got for me? Similarities we haven't listed? Good. Okay. Two ears, two eyes. And I mean, you go down that whole route. Two ears, two eyes, four legs, uh, kidneys, a heart, two lungs, ribs. Yeah. So anatomically, they are fairly similar. Okay. Any other similarities we didn't list? Well, it can be just 
That's we got that. Oh. Anything else? They're like kind of sitting in the same position. Oh, they're sitting in the same position. Okay. They're well. They're both sitting. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else? They both have foreheads. <laughs> Correct. Right. That would lump into the whole anatomical part of it. Okay. Good. Uh, differences. Maddie. They're different animals. They're different species. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Yes, they are different species. That I mean, it's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got something else? One of them has their tongue out. Good. Okay, that is a difference if you look at the, I mean, obviously these aren't real animals, they're pictures of animals, but the picture of the dog has its mouth open, the cat's mouth is closed because it's spotting something as all cats are. Mm -hmm. Evil. Pets of, from hell. Sorry, I'm a dog person in case you didn't know. Claire, what do you got? Um, the cat has stripes. Nice. Um, they have different eye colors, and the cat has pointy ears. All right, I'll give you that. I would also throw in they have a different nose color. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. What else? Audrey. Say again. Dog has longer fur, very good. Not always true, but in this particular case, yes. Yeah. Nice. Good. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty here. Anything else? Oh, uh, the cat has a reflection. Good. In that particular picture, the cat has a reflection. The dog is just sitting on some whiteness, I guess. Okay. Anything else? Beautiful. Okay, let's try that again, but we'll change it. For those of you that are struggling, that's called a chair. Madeline, you're up. I know you're still writing, but let's move on. What do they have in common? They have four legs. Beautiful. Both have four legs. What else? Um, Go ahead, Sam. They're both sitting. So Sam is arguing that they're both sitting. We know the dog is sitting. Is that chair sitting? Again, that's why I wanted to bring it up. I, I didn't have a response to it. I could see it both ways. Like, how does a chair sit? But in fact, the chair is just sitting there. But you can say that about anything. That recycling bin is just sitting there. Good. Um, both different shades of brown. Ooh, nice. Okay, good. Anything else? If they could both be picked up. That is a true statement. It's hard to argue with that. I'll give you that. But. Good. I like it. Any other similarities? How about the fact that they both have backs? Ooh! Anything else? All right. 
Differences. Sam? The chair is made out of wood. Good. The dog is not. We think. I mean, we assume that's a real dog. Good. And I think this one, you'll all agree, there's a lot of other things you could do with differences, yes? One's alive, one's not. One can move, the other one doesn't. You sit on one, you, well, you normally don't sit on a dog, but I don't know what kind of weird twisted things you do in your house, but we never sat on our dogs. One's a piece of furniture, one is a pet. So tons of differences. Now, when writing definitions, we want a definition that adequately describes the thing we're trying to define while also excluding things that it's not. Okay, so in other words, if we're writing a definition between a dog and a cat, we're writing, let's say, the definition of a dog. We want to be sure that that definition adequately describes the dog, but doesn't allow a cat to also be part of that definition. When you're doing something like this, and say, well, I want to write a definition of a dog, you're not going to be thinking to yourself, I'm going to write a definition of a dog, but I've got to be sure to exclude chairs. That makes no sense. But it is something that comes up while we're doing definitions. So write a definition for that. That's a dog, by the way. Again, it should adequately, adequately describe the item or the thing while also excluding things that are not dogs. Uh, quickly raise your hand, please. Hi, if I, uh, so everybody can see it. For those of you that have dogs as pets, or a dog as a pet. Is that most? Okay, thank you. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is take your definition, compare it to everybody in your group, and come up with one definition that represents your entire group. Okay, just say so you just what you like? What? Uh, a dog is a four legged domesticated canine. I said a dog is 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 a you can see the cats do the same thing for the dog is an animal. So we all started with the dog. Say again? Okay, so as we continue through this whole geometry thing, this process of writing definitions is going to become very commonplace. And so what we're, we're going through this process where I gave you time to write your own definition. Now I've narrowed it down to your tables. 
Now we want to go from the tables to one definition that we use. And the thing that freaks people out about this class is that you're used to maybe looking in a textbook and finding the definition of a dog is blah, blah, blah. As we get into geometry, your definition of geometric figures and things might be very different than six periods. Might be very different than your friend that has Mrs. Pacini, but we don't care. If the definition works for us, then we're good to go, but it's something we have to all agree on. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at one definition, and if we're not part of that group, we're going to be what I talked about before as being a skeptic. We're going to look at their definition and see if we can nitpick it apart because we need to have a good definition. Okay. Julia, let's go with yours. I liked yours. Go ahead. Okay, a mammal with four legs, I can spell, uh-huh, Bark. barks, has a tail and fur, has a tail and, fur. And, is a common pet. and is a common pet. Okay, so let's start by imagining that she didn't say that last thing circled in red. Let's just say their definition is a mammal with four legs, barks, has a tail, and a fur. Is that a good definition of a dog? Claire, you're shaking your head no. Why not? Um, um, I don't know. I mean, I think, like, besides the barking parts, it could also, like, apply to many other animals. For instance? Um, a tiger. I don't know if a tiger barks, I, but I don't hang out with tigers a lot. They, I mean, they, I don't they know. roar. I don't know if. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> what else would that definition, Natalie? Um, a dog doesn't really need to have Oh, good. Can I come back to that in a second? Oh, it says usually. Okay. Oh, okay, hold on. Wait. Y yes. Stop for a second. Let me finish the, the thing we were talking about with Claire. What other animals have four legs, barks, has a tail, and fur? Come on. Lions don't bark, they roar. Um, a wolf. A coyote. By the way, I saw two coyotes this morning on my run hanging outside the, uh, the um, cafeteria entrance. <laughs> yeah, why would I lie? Yeah. They were just kind of chilling. I drove by, they just looked at me. So. All right, so because that isn't enough and it doesn't adequately describe the dog, we have this other part. Okay. Now, does that, okay, I'm oh, sorry, I was going to go back to the four legs thing. When we're writing definitions, we're going to pretend that we're talking about, I don't want to use the word normality, but I will anyways. Most dogs have four legs, yes? Yes, there's that dog out there that was in a crazy accident or lost a leg in Vietnam or something, but <laughs> there are dogs out there that only have three legs or no legs. What do you do with a dog with no legs? You take it for a drag. I don't Get it? No. You normally take a dog for a walk, but if it doesn't have legs, you take it for a drag. Oh. What do you what do you name a dog with no legs? <laughs> no, you don't, because it won't come when you call it. <laughs> okay, so here's the third part. Listen carefully. I'm only gonna say this once. What do you name a dog with no legs and steel testicles? Sparky. <laughs> Okay, now how many people really understand that joke? Raise your hand. Michael, could you explain it, please? <laughs> huh? You don't have to do anything. It's America. It's like far right, right. Uh, Well, I, I, I think I get it. I could be wrong, but if you're a uh, good drag. <laughs> you got it. There you go. Lots hit the ground, then it could have. Uh, yeah, it sparks, right? Yeah, it sparks. Yeah. Okay, good. So we got that. Okay. <laughs> I don't even remember what we were doing. Oh, is that a good definition of a dog? 
Does that adequately describe a dog? Yes? Is there any other animals that would fit into that category that aren't dogs? You don't normally keep a wolf or a coyote as a common pet. Cats don't bark. Yeah. Well, I taught my cat to bark. Yeah, it's one of those freaky animals that we don't want to talk about. It's like the three-legged dog. It doesn't belong in the discussion. Okay. Now, we've spent almost a half hour, well, not a half hour, let's say 20 minutes on this definition. And by the way, a dog is not a geometric term, in case you didn't know. But you understand how difficult this process can be. For, for all of you except these four people, are you okay with that definition? Yeah. Any objections? Then that would become our group definition for a dog. We're good? Okay. What if... We have that little guy. Does that chihuahua, sorry, is the definition of that chihuahua also satisfied by Julia's definition of a dog, or this group's definition of a dog? No. Is that a mammal with four legs that barks and is a common pet? Yes. Good. You see where we're going with this? Okay. Now, the reason I included that slide is sometimes when people define dogs, they throw things in there that don't necessarily apply to all dogs, like has long fur, uh, has a, uh, a red tongue. Not all dogs have red tongues. Anybody know the exception? A chow has a black tongue. Okay, so. It would, it would be nice if I could tell you that every term that we talk about in this class is going to have a definition. It doesn't. We're going to have three terms that are going to be undefined. Now, what does it mean by undefined? It means just that. It's not going to have a definition. We'll have descriptions of it, but we won't have an exact definition like we did for the dog. Well, how does that work? There are tons of terms that fit into that category. Like, for instance, if you try to define the word time, T-I-M-E, that's fairly difficult to do. What is time? Well, you can talk about what time, what effects time has on things. You can talk about how a clock works. You can talk about all different types of ideas about time, but actually defining the term time is rather difficult. Our first is a point. What is a point? Sorry, that wasn't a rhetorical question. What is a point? Ryan, what's a point? Um, like a point uh, on a graph? Yeah, not like this point. Okay. Like a point on okay. a graph, yeah. Um, a unit to describe the position of something? If it's on a coordinate plane, yes. That's not horrible. Good. Gabe, are you raising your hand or just doing no, some yoga? Searching. Okay, I understand. We're going to describe it, and notice I didn't say we're going to define it. We're going to describe a point that's a location similar to what Ryan said. But we're going to add on to it. It has no shape and no size. So you might be saying to yourself, well, wait a second, isn't, isn't this just a point? That's a point, right? Um, is that a dog? Yeah? yeah? No, it's not. That's a picture of a dog. Now you're saying to yourself, Self, he's an idiot. But I'm trying to make a point here. Oh, see what I did? Make a point here. That was totally unintentional. That's a picture of a dog. That's not an actual dog. Is that a point? No, that's a representation of a point. 
We, if it has no size nor shape, we can't draw it. My pen is not sharp enough. It's really, really, really tiny. So we draw that thing to represent a point. Commonly call that a dot. Okay. So we use a dot to represent a point. We can't really draw a point because it's really tiny. And this is one of our basic, it's not one of, it is the basic building block of geometry. Everything that we do in geometry is made up of points. Lots and lots of points. If it has no shape or size, how many would fit into a Dixie cup? Infinite. How many would fit in this room? Infinite. Which one is bigger? Why? Infinity is infinity. Hey. Hi. Do you have a Megan in here? No. I think they're sending me to the wrong room. Megan Conan or something? No? No. Okay, thanks. That was weird. Let's move on. Infinity is infinity. There's no such thing as infinity plus one. Okay, or infinity and beyond. Buzz Lightyear was wrong. Okay, they're the same thing. And that doesn't sit comfortable with people. The idea that the amount that you put in a Dixie cup is equal to the amount that would fill this room doesn't equate normally for us. The human mind doesn't really deal with infinity that well. Okay. The more important thing is how do we represent them? Well, we're going to represent them with a dot, because we can't actually draw a point, and we label them with capital letters. Yes, the capital part is important. So that would be the point X. Okay, we talked about dot versus point. As we progress through this and you get a better understanding of a lot of these terms, we're going to kind of give up on the whole dot versus point argument, but it's worth mentioning seeing as we talked about a picture of a dog versus an actual dog. It would have been nice if I could bring an actual dog into the classroom, but we don't do that anymore. Yeah, that was the drug dog. We still bring drug dogs in. We don't bring the, yeah, we don't bring the therapy. We used to have therapy dogs here. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. You have a bad day, you go pet the dog, feel a lot better. But no. Well, that became the problem. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Julia's having a bad day. She goes to pet this dog. You're highly allergic. Next thing you know, your throat swells up. You can't breathe. But she'll feel better. Therein lies the problem. Yeah, definitely a winner. <laughs> All right, second term. Take a bunch of points, you put them together, and they form a line. Well, okay, so how does that work? How many of those do you have to put together to get a line? At some point, you got to kind of give up on the infinitely small thing and think of the points as like, I don't know, golf balls. You line a bunch of golf balls up, and they eventually form a line. Okay, which looks like, where is it? That thing at the bottom. So let me break this down for you. That's what a line looks like. Aiden, what do the arrowheads mean? Uh, Why are they there? It's continuously going in multiple directions. Perfect. There are a ton of points on that line. In fact, there are an infinite number of points on the line. But I chose two of them to be special. And they're special because I gave them names. I called that one red dot on the left B. I called that one red point on the right C. There are others, but I just chose to make those two special. So if I was to give you that picture and say how many points are on this line, the answer would still be infinity, but I've labeled two of them as special. Two ways to name a line. Actually, three ways. One way is just line M. 
Okay, you see the lowercase m down there. Not very common. More commonly, we're going to pick two points on the line, name them, and then put a line symbol over the top. Okay, that's the line that passes through BC. You could also do this. Doesn't matter. If it goes on forever, it can go on forever in both directions. While you're writing, I'm going to back up for a second. How many dimensions does a point have? Wait, maybe that's an early question. How many dimensions is the world that you live in? Three. Three. Yeah, you live in a three-dimensional world. How many dimensions does that point have? Now, wait, hold on. Why, are, why do you live in a three-dimensional world? Because if you take any object, you can measure three things. Length, width, height. You can think of like measuring a box or measuring the recycling bin. How wide is it? How tall is it? How deep is it? How many dimensions does that point have? How many things can you measure about the point? Two. Nope. Zero. It has no size nor shape, so you can't measure anything. What about the line? How many dimensions? Just one. How long is that puppy? The answer would be infinity, but that's the only thing. Now you're saying to yourself, wait, it has thickness. You gotta imagine that that thickness isn't there. Because those points that make up that line isn't there, aren't there. Sorry, bad English. So we go zero, di uh, zero dimensions, one dimension, and now expand it into three dimensions. Get, uh, sorry, two dimensions. I have trouble with numbers. Zero, one, two. We get our third term, which is a plane. And I got a picture of one, whoops, right there. It's an infinitely large piece of paper an infinitely large flat surface. I can't draw that, so I just make it look like a three-dimensional rectangle or square. We don't talk about a plane very much because we are studying what's called Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry means everything takes place on a plane. It's not until probably April that we start talking about three dimensions in here. So again, I don't know, I don't want to dwell on that too much. Let's move in first two definitions. These I'm going to give you, because I don't have an hour to argue about all these first two definitions. Collinear. What does the prefix co mean? So what does linear mean? Line. Good. So collinear would mean? Two lines together? No. <laughs> Co? Two. No. Together. together. Linear? Line. Line. Together on the same line. They're together on the same line. Let's go back to you. What does non-collinear mean? Um, two or more points that are not on the same line. That's a double prefix. Non and co.
take a break after the next slide because I got two more definitions for you. Yes, again. You're doing such a great job. I'm gonna stay with you because then I'd have to rely on somebody else. What does coplanar mean? Um, I'm saying how many. Okay, now let's bring it home. This is the last one I'll ask you. How about non coplanar? Not the same thing. Bingo! I know I could rely on you. Thank you very much. Okay, we good? Almost. Okay, let's play a quick game of heads or tails. Stand up. You remember this one, yes? We'll be playing for a prize this morning. Either put your hands on your head or grasp your buttocks. Everybody good? Everybody done? Good? Everybody up? Everybody made choice? Okay. Tails. Heads, sit on down. Re choose. Heads. Pick again. Get the lay of the land, right? Tails. Oh. All right, here we go. Okay. Okay. Somebody, we're going to have a winner here. Tails. Nice. Okay, uh, it's 9.22. Be back ready to go at 9.27. Wait, hold on. Remember what I said, if you leave the room, you need to be quiet so I don't get yelled at. I get yelled at, you know what that means? You get yelled at. No. All right, go. Ella, come and get your prize. I'm going to go through the next couple slides quickly because um, they're not nearly as important as some of the later slides where we get into a little bit of, uh, I'm going to use the A word, algebra. Ooh, yeah, I know. It's horrible, right? So uh, the next couple slides are all about drawing, and it's something that's going to require a little bit of practice. Hence the reason it's called practice. But I'll give you both problems, and then, um, again, I'm going to go through it quickly. I don't want to give you 10 minutes to work on that. But a line x, y passing through the plane R, label the, second, the, label the point where the line intersects the plane as the second letter of your first name, and then two lines M and M that intersect at the point Q. Okay? So, again, if we had a little bit more time, I would stop and give you time to play with this and look at your horrible drawings. I'll just show you my awesome drawings. I get that. Okay? So... The yellow thing is the plane. That line is passing through it. Why is part of that line dashed, Michael? Um, because it's... I should not know. Okay. Yeah. Elena, why is that uh, line dashed? Through the 
plane. Good. It's hidden behind the plane. So that's supposed to be a three-dimensional looking picture. If you imagine that as being a pencil poked through a piece of paper, part of that pencil would be hidden below the paper. Just as a fast fact, that point where a line intersects a plane is called the foot. Okay, not very exciting, because like I said, we're not gonna do a lot of three-dimensional stuff. Problem number two is important, however. Two lines intersect, their point of intersection is labeled the point Q. We've done work with that when we solve systems of equations. That's what it would look like. Okay. All right, now we get into more interesting thing. Okay, what's a line segment? Do you know? What, uh, by the way, refresh my memory. When do you do geometry in elementary schools? In fourth grade? Third grade? You do remember doing geometry, right? No, you just blanked it out like it was a traumatic experience. A line segment is a portion of a line. So if you take a line and you erase the two arrowheads, you get a line segment. It has a definite starting point and ending point. Those starting points and ending points are called endpoints. It starts at an endpoint, it ends at an endpoint. That doesn't make any sense, but that's how it works. And there's a reason for that, which I'll explain in a second. In that second line is how you name a line segment. So when we talked about a line, it was two points on the line with a line symbol over it. A line segment is the two endpoints with a line segment over it. So you name the object with the object you're naming. I think I said that right, yeah. There it is. Yeah. A finite portion of a line. Lines go on forever, infinite. Segments do not. Just like naming the line, you could call that AB or you could call that BA. It doesn't matter. Now notice that last thing. In your notes, I would like you to draw and label segment XY and put the point Q between X and Y. Do that first, then we'll talk about what the term between means. Notification at the same time. What, you win the lottery? Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. You out of here now? Yeah, 400. I love it. Yeah. Just remember your friends. How'd I do so far? Yeah, we're good? Yeah, line segment, no arrowheads. Starts at X, ends at Y, could have switched the locations, it doesn't matter. Now, all of you did something interesting. Everybody, and I mean everybody, put Q there. Is that wrong? No, beautiful, no problems. So we all agree that, that that Q is between X and Y, yes? Okay, I'm gonna change colors. What if I put Q over here? Is Q 
cubed between x and y? Yeah. It is. Huh. What if I put it over here? Is q between x and y? OK, that's easy, right? We're all in agreement. So you all put it in the middle just because you felt that's where it wanted to go. But, but my blue q's are OK. Yeah? OK, excellent. How about this black q? Is that q between x and y? Yeah, you're shaking your head no, why not? Because it's not in like the it's not in the line. The line use the proper terms. Line segment. Segment, very good. It's not on the line segment. Ellie, you were shaking your head yes though. Well it's still in between X and Y. Okay. So if I move over here, are you between me and Maddie? Yeah, easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? This will work great on the video, by the way. Are you still between me and Maddie? Yeah. No. So this yes, that last step is the doozy though, and that becomes no. So why is this one okay and this one not? Okay. Alright, so here, take this. This will be fun. Go up there. Oh God. Yeah, I know it's so far to walk. You gonna be okay? You need some Gatorade. Pace yourself. <laughs> Could you put a point on the board where you think, and we'll label it Q because that seems to be the pattern. Put your Q on the board where it would not be, would not be between X and Y. There, it's already on there. So, Wait, so my Q is not between X and Y? <laughs> now I'm confused. Do well, you think, it's okay, not... let, let's back up. All right, we'll talk you through this. Are the blue Qs between X and Y? Yes. Is the black Q between X and Y? Well, I mean, yes. No. No. Wait, I don't know. Well, yes. It is between X and Y. I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just asking for clarification. Yes. Okay, good. So if, you, if we agree that all those points, all those cues on the board right now are between X and Y, could you put a point on the board that's not between X and Y? Like here? It's not working. How is it not working? Oh, your sleeve was on the board. Oh, okay. Your sleeve off the board. <laughs> Your sleeve was still on. It's, okay. Oh, that's a really bad dot. That's a honking point for sure. Okay, close enough. Okay, just give me that and step that's away. Wow, that is a big point. So that is not between X and Y. No. Why are those two black cues different? She needs some help. Anybody, anybody agree that this is still between X and Y? Raise your hand. Nobody wants to jump on the yellow bandwagon? Perhaps you're just going to totally throw up. Yes? You think it is? Okay. Then, do you agree with her that this is not between X and Y? So what makes a point between and not between? see what you're doing so both of you knuckleheads are doing this right I don't know how I did that that was pretty cool how did that happen no that I don't know I'm wondering the same thing so you did that and then said if it's in those two little guys so then are you saying that if I put Q down here, it would be between X and Y? 
what if I go infinitely down? Would it be, be between x and y? So if we're going to use that for betweenness, then what can you tell me about those black things I drew? Ooh, now we're getting into a gray area there. What does it mean to be in range? Interesting. Anybody? Sorry, who agrees? Makes sense, right? Yeah. The problem is we could do that, but that causes all kinds of problems. Like, how do we determine these black lines? Are they perpendicular? Are they just drawn at a certain distance? What, should they go like that, or should they go like this, or should they be horizontal? Okay. So we're going to, in order to uh, eliminate that problem, we're going to go back to Maddie's definition and say it has to be on the line segment. Now, the reason I like that better, and I'm overruling, is because it's short and sweet. These blue cues and the red one are between X and Y because it's on the line segment. The black cues are not because they're off the line segment. And yes, by your definition, we could have gone that route and said, let's, let's do it the other way and draw some. Because Ellie, you were doing the same thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We could go that route, but it becomes very confusing. Okay. Two symbols that become very important that's going to cause a lot of problems for people. This first one is the symbol for a segment. It's a physical object. It's all the points connecting A and B. Without a symbol over it, it's a distance. Okay, so before we move on, let me ask you a simple question. Suppose I've got a segment MN and a point P. If this whole thing is 12 and this is 4, how long is that? Eight. Perfect. Any difficulty with that? Good. Okay, so let's change it. Suppose this is 7. We'll leave that at 4. How long is that? 11. Anything difficult about that? Okay, so as we progress to the following problems, you want to keep this simple example in your brain. The two little guys, MP and PN have to add up to be the big segment, MN. Okay, so let me write that down. MP plus PN has to equal MN. Okay, that having been said, let's move on to this example. I'll talk you through this one. I'll show you how to do it. Then I'll have one for you to practice on. I have a segment AB. No, sorry, I have a segment AC. Yeah. So I have a segment where B is between A and C. And I know some information. We'll skip the information for a second. I'm going to draw a picture first. I get that. That's the exact picture I just drew on the last slide. Except instead of numbers, I've got some algebraic expressions. Okay, so based on what we did here with this guy, what equation can I set up here? Um, 
what did we do here? MP the two little guys together add up to be the third guy, yes? Two little guys add up to be the third guy. I'm sorry? There's no M and P and N there. A, A, B. Let's let him struggle a little bit more. It's fun to watch. A, B plus B, C equals A, C. Thank you, Nate. Now, how does that translate into an equation? Even though that technically that is an equation, but um, I don't know. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I just need the part where A B. You had the A B, the B C, and the A C together. Okay, Audrey. The two little parts add up to be the big part. And then the rest of that is just some algebra. The little guy, 3x, plus the other little guy, 14, equals the entire length. Just like, again, I know you're writing, I'm sorry, we did there. The two little guys added up, 4 plus 7 equals the big guy, 11. Solve for x, simple linear equation, get x, and then answer the question, how long is ab? How did I get ab? I took the 9 and plugged it back in, 9 times 3, 27. This will be fun. Now you do one on your own. Go. When you're done, check with your group. If you haven't already done so, I would recommend drawing a picture. Is it minus 45? Uh, that's one way to do it, but it takes too many more than that. Age of the 
I'll do it quickly, since most people seem to get the answer of four. Yes? Yes. Okay, so I start with this segment. I know S and U are the endpoints. Many of you are getting in the habit of putting T, which is between S and U, smack dab in the middle. That's okay. I'm feeling a little fancies in my panties. I'm going to put T over here, just because I can. Okay. That means that this is 7X. This is 5X minus 3. And this whole thing is 45. Michael, what equation did you get? I got uh, 12x minus 3. Wait, oh, no, no, give me the basic equation from the very beginning. Um, oh, oh, yeah, it does. Uh, 7x plus 5 minus 3 equals 45. Good. The two little guys added up equal the big guy. Now, could you have done it as a subtraction problem? Yes, you could say 45 minus 7x equals 5x minus 3, but I think most people are going to get it better when you set it up as a two small part added together to give you the big. Michael, did you also get ST? Um, ST is 7x. I don't know. Did anybody get ST? Madeline? Why? Yeah. Take this value of x, eep, plug it into st, and st equals, what did we say, 28. Good. If you wanted to check, you could even plug it into the other one. 7 times 5 is 35, minus 3 is 32. Did I do my math? No, sorry, it's 4. 4 times 5 is 20, minus 3 is 17. Does 17 plus four, uh, 28 equal 45? And it does, and we're good to go. Question? Um, may I get tissue? Certainly. You don't have to ask. Cool. Okay, questions on this? Mm -hmm. Questions? Uh, do we have to draw this, or can we just do the Do you have to? No, this is America. Like far right on. <laughs> not doing anything. I would highly recommend it, especially early on. Sometimes I'll give you a picture in a case like this. When I don't, I would recommend just to keep track of everything, but you don't have to. Uh, you will need to show an equation and obviously solve it. Okay? Almost done. Our first new symbol. So geometers are very lazy human beings. We create abbreviations and symbols for everything. Here's our first symbol. That thing. It means congruent. <laughs> congruent segments have the same measure, but congruency by definition means same size, same shape. And this is where it gets a little nitpicky, a little bit more than I really care for, but this first sentence says that the length of AB is equal to the length of CD. 45 is equal to 45. The second one says the size and shape of the segment AB is the same as the size and shape of the segment CD. We'll use congruency most of the time, but occasionally we'll throw some equal in there too. An equal sign compares numbers. Congruency symbol compares size and shape. I know this was a very long lesson. We've been recording for almost an hour, or at least an hour. Some of that was dead time. 
I apologize for that. They won't normally be this long. We just had a lot of stuff to cover. So I wanted to be sure to get as much done as possible. Okay. And we also spent a lot of time arguing about what a dog is <laughs> and what is between them. And again, that won't always happen. As you get more comfortable with this, things will work out. Okay. So, question. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this video that I recorded during the lesson will be posted in the folder.